if it bit me, could I die? Yeah, you're gonna be dead on the floor, two seconds flat. Hong Kong is iconic for its dim sum, mm. its succulent roasted meats, and even its firm and meaty fish balls. Mm. But if you scratch beneath the surface, Hong Kong is also home to some of the most unique food from around the world. I've never had a scrotum. Do they shave it? Today, my trusty food guide, Virginia, is taking me to experience the strange side of the city. <laughs> right? Taking on extreme Chinese medicinal ingredients. What do you think they are? All the way to encountering vicious predators that aren't going down without a fight. Is she really gonna murder the snake in front of all these people? They can live without the gallbladder, so I'll still be alive. This is Hong Kong, and today we're going balls out. This morning, Virginia's taking me to a wet market to show me Hong Kong's most extreme egg concoction. A black egg. What's going on here? You can call it a century egg, a thousand-year-old egg, or Dan. How long does it take to become like this? About four to six weeks, depending. Oh. It does not take a thousand years. <laughs> that would be a bad business plan. They're not a thousand years old, but they are aged, preserved in a combination of ash, salt, quicklime, and rice husks. I'm about to split it in half. Oh. Wow, look at that. It looks like a section from the core of the earth. What would normally be an egg white is this translucent amber like from Jurassic Park. If there's a mosquito in there, you can actually make dinosaurs. Much like me, you will learn to love the egg over time in spite of its smell. Okay, here you go. Oh, thank you. Oh, at first it was very lovely, strong, kind of pungent, funky aroma. I gotta say though, I tried it a few years ago. I couldn't really handle it. I'm trying it now. I'm like, man, I think- Your taste buds are changing. Um, yeah, something's changing. I like it. It's got some funk to it. And think of it as just something to complement a dish. Like it'll go up to a dish and it'll be like, you're looking good tonight. Tasting the egg plain is for true veterans. But in reality, most locals mix these thousand year old eggs with tofu or kanji. This restaurant, Guan Ki, a sort of Hong Kong breakfast diner, takes this dish a step further. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Bye, Vince. Thank you so much for having us today. Joining us at our brunch table, shop owner Mr. Ho, who took over his father's business. Has this always been on the menu? Yeah. From the beginning? From the beginning. Today, we're trying their most unique kanji. It starts with diced thousand-year-old eggs, then minced raw beef mixed with fried rice. All that is topped with steaming hot rice porridge. One of the reasons I really love this part of the world is it has a very unique food culture mm -hmm. that you can't find anywhere else, especially the variety of foods you can find here. We eat everything. We don't want to put anything to waste. And it comes from the fact that maybe before back in the day, people were quite poor, so nothing goes to waste. Right, absolutely. We already tried the plain century egg in the market, and now we're going to try it the proper way. Let's try it out. Oh, okay. Oh, that's delicious. It warms your heart. Oh my God. It's just unbelievably savory, nice thick porridge. It's more mellow now with the congee as opposed to just eating it right out of the shell. Right. Do you want to try some with the Chinese donut? Oh, the smell of fried dough in the morning. I'm going to just take a bite of it. Okay. It's so good, right? Oh my God. I love it. I would never get sick of this. Though Hong Kong has plenty of modern hospitals and clinics, these days, many still practice traditional Chinese medicine, using a long list of sometimes very unexpected ingredients to cure what ails them. In pharmacies like this, the line between medicine and food is not so obvious. Thank you for having us today. You are a traditional Chinese medicine pharmacist, is that right? right. Chinese pharmacist, yes. Okay, Chinese pharmacist. I was in Iran recently about my hair problem. So this is for my friend, obviously. My hair is fine and kind of lush and thick and beautiful. I've got about 10 hairs here doing the work of 100. How can I get this back? You have to replenish your chi. Oh, do you have any chi here? On the counter here, you brought us some of your most unique items, at least unique for me. So this is a dried out gecko. Now, what exactly is the dried gecko used for? He says like, it's going to make you walk lighter. Oh, I could use that here. This is something I haven't seen anywhere in the world. What do you think they are? 
They're cockroaches. Yes, so you've seen them. I've seen people eating or using bugs all over the world. The one insect I've never seen anywhere in the world, the cockroach, and I always assumed it's just because it was too dirty. The general cockroach versus the LV Louis Vuitton cockroach is different. This is high class. Wow, explain, yeah. please. The high class cockroach has a golden rim. Yeah. Yeah. Does that freak you out? Oh, I don't like cockroaches. So do you seep this into a tea or something like that? You boil it with a bunch of other things. And then the this last one. This is a centipede. This is good for after your stroke. It's to help with your ligaments. Why'd you say after your stroke and not after a stroke? Do you see a stroke impending? Did I say our stroke? You said after your stroke, like I'm gonna, I look like I'm gonna have a stroke any day now. I'm taking Virginia's Freudian slip as a bad omen for my health. I'm not only a tour guide, I'm like a fortune teller. To ensure my well-being and safety, I'm asking Mr. Tsui for a quick checkup. Oh, you get tired easily. True. Stroke, it, yes or no? I need some reassurance. <laughs> Luckily, Mr. Tsui has a medicinal blend just for me. Ginseng for the hair and cockroaches for the stroke. Packaged up and ready to be cooked as soon as we can find a teapot. Before I have that stroke Virginia mentioned, she's taking me here. The intersection of medicine, food, and creatures you didn't expect to see on the menu. Thank you so much for having us here. Here you'll find one of the most dangerous creatures in Hong Kong. Her name is Miss Chao Ka Ling, the queen of snakes. I guess these guys are dangerous too, but they're no match for her. And as a child, were you ever afraid of snakes? Absolutely no. No fear. I feel a bond with you because I also have no fear. In the past, I've gone to a snake restaurant that was in Taiwan, and it was a bullshit snake restaurant. I think it was just for tourists. It was very disappointing. But here, I see a load of people genuinely enjoying some snake porridge. Why are people eating this? We need to eat snake to replenish and rejuvenate our energy. Also, the snake will have no cholesterol, so it's healthy too. This place dabbles in much more than snakes, like their gecko stew, used by some to treat asthma, diabetes, and or erectile dysfunction. As I understand, this shelf is filled with different snakes in these boxes. It actually says poisonous snake here. Is it really poisonous? This one is not poisonous. But can you say it is for drama? Yes, of course. If it bit me, could I die? Oh yeah, you're gonna be dead on the floor two seconds back. Oh, this episode's crazy. All right, let's do it. She'll start us off with a snake vial appetizer, though it's more of a test to see if you have what it takes to move on to round two. <laughs> oh! <laughs> All right, yeah. okay. All right, I'll grab it. Oh my God, you scared the shit out of me. Is this what we're gonna eat? Yeah, this one, yeah. Wait, is she really gonna murder the snake in front of all these people? No, it doesn't die. I'm sorry, it doesn't die? They just take out the gallbladder? Yeah, and they can put leave in a new without one? the gallbladder. I don't think that's how it works. Yeah, that's how it works. Just watch. Okay. Miss Ling feels for the gallbladder. Then with surgical precision, she slits open the snake's underside and pulls out the bile sack with her bare hands. That's insane. I've never seen someone do this so cleanly. This prized body fluid can enhance one's chi or even cure hemorrhoids, or so they say. Usually, you drink it with alcohol, but the snake lady, I mean the queen of snakes, insists that we gulp it down with just a touch of water. Are you sure you don't want mine? She's like, it's so little, you can do it. All right, are you ready? Uh, yeah, I guess. Cheers. Mmm, <laughs> it's not bad. Oh. oh, it's not as bad as you yeah. say. Yeah. It is slightly sweet, but it is a <laughs> deep <laughs> bitterness. <laughs> Somebody have a Gatorade? Do you have Coke Zero? No Gatorade, no Coke. But the owner has offered me a bottle of something a bit more adventurous. This is the Gecko Snake Penis Wine. Yeah. Sorry, what? This is a Gecko Snake Penis Wine. Is it the Gecko's penis or the snake's penis or everyone just threw their penis in together? Which, huh? Just the snake penis. How do you say penis in Cantonese? Bean. 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 My mom's gonna watch this and be like, oh my goodness. This is what everyone really comes here for, the snake soup. You may have guessed the first ingredient already, it's snake. Quickly dispatched and skinned, though it may not be obvious, the snake is no longer alive. It's over now. 
the snake is blanched until the meat is soft enough to peel away from the bones. She creates a stock from snake and pork bones, adds a bit of minced chicken meat, then meat from six different types of snakes, ginger and mushroom. Cornstarch helps thicken it up. Chinese wine and soy sauce adds even more flavor. Here we have a wonderful array of dishes. It's part medicine, it's part food, and all of it is gonna nourish our soul. This is like the four cheese pizza of snakes. It's the meat lovers or the cheese lovers, yeah. <laughs> okay. So we like to bring out the taste of the snake with a little bit of a garnish. This is a lemon leaf. And then I like to have a little bit of texture for mine. So there is a little bit of a chip. All right, you've got your little routine. I got yeah. a big old spoonful. Let's try it out. I think that's pretty good. Yeah, it's uh, very thick, like a gravy almost from that starch. It's warming me up from the inside. It's like a warm hug from the inside. Next, so here is a gecko and many other different odds and ends. The gecko soup starts with a boiling pot full of herbs and spices. So far, it's feeling very Rachel Ray. Then this happens. She adds dry seahorse, pipefish, cow penis, and finally, the gecko. So here is a gecko and many other different odds and ends. Do we eat any of this? No. It seems like such a waste. What we could do is just put it on the bottom and then crush it so the more of the flavor comes out. Uh, I think we're good. We got lots of flavor. Okay, so there it is. It's just a straight up round broth. All right, let's try it out. Fine. It's like a Chinese soup. Oh, I'm so relieved. It's just light, watery, and not salty or savory or anything. It's just very simple. It has a little bit of medicine flavor, but I've had some Chinese medicine before that was super intense and bitter, and this is not like that. This three-course medicinal brunch is nearly complete. Our final dish, a cockroach stew. The ginseng and cockroaches are steeped in boiling water for 45 minutes. Lucky for me, I don't need to eat the cockroaches. We're only meant to drink the remaining broth. I think it's gonna just taste like ginseng because there's a lot of ginseng in it. No, smell it. It smells like cockroaches. <laughs> right? Let's go for it. <laughs> ah, ginseng. Ooh, not ginseng. Oh, wait, I got a leg. So it's kind of smoky. It tastes kind of like old nuts. And like an old mattress. It smells worse than it actually tastes. And you know what? I made it all for you. Thank you so much for trying it. Now I want you to drink it all. Ladies. Thank you. Oh no, I got another leg. <laughs> <laughs> when you said soup, yes. I was freaked out at first because I thought we're going to be eating the bugs, we're going to be chewing off the leg of a gecko. But for me, it's just a broth, really. I absolutely feel something. Like my heart's beating faster. Maybe we can walk faster because we have the cockroach properties in us. Good. Great. Good. <laughs> you nailed it. Welcome to Ka Lai Yun Chu Chow Restaurant. Ox horns, gold covered walls, and towering photos of the celebrity chef and owner. This place is a celebration of beef, and lots of it. From beef brisket to the bull's more delicate parts. Hello, sir. Oh, hello. Put her there. Thank you so much for having us today. Can you tell me, where did this all begin? <laughs> Mr. Hui was born in Chaozhou and immigrated to Hong Kong when he was only 14. He immediately started working for this restaurant and fully took it over just two years later at the age of 16. Your restaurant is a celebration of color and lights. I love it. It's like a casino, except for the only surprise is like, what meat am I going to actually be eating today? Maybe you could give us a bit of a tour and tell us what we're looking at. <laughs> This would be the bull penis, or sorry, the cow penis. These are the testicles. Okay. This is, um, I think this is what you call the scrotum. The scrotum? Do they shave it? Does it get itchy after they shave it? So many questions. Wow, it's like a kite. If it's warm, oh, oh my God. Oh, great, lovely. He's putting the cow back together. So if this gets cold, does it get smaller? Can you ask him that? It's very important for science. What's this one? This is called like the cow's happy part, which is actually the female's JJ. He says that this part is actually very hairy, but then they clean it. A Brazilian. They call it a Brazilian. Jokes aside, guys, let's grow up. The question on everybody's mind is why? So back in the day, it was because it was for free. They wanted to see what they could make from it. And now one of these is like 60 to 70 Hong Kong dollars. Sir, I can't wait to try it out. 
Thank you so much. This dish is really special. You take some beef this, but I know, some beef and towels. Chop it all up, douse it in bull broth and some mother fried garlic and onions. This guy doesn't just serve penis. Yeah. He serves a lot of different things, like these balls, fish balls, other kind of balls, stomach. But we're not gonna review everything. We're really here for the penis. Before we even got here, they chopped up all these organs and put them in a broth. Like, we kind of don't know what's what. It's like there's male, there's female. It's like a unisex bathroom. Do you think that's a testicle? Yeah, that would be it. It seems too smooth to be a testicle. Let's try it out, huh? Okay, let's bit. do it. damn good. It's amazingly not gamey at all. Yeah, it's not gamey. Like, that is where the gaminess comes from. How is it not gamey? Oh no, mine still has a hair. What is that? Don't put your food under a microscope. Let's eat it. <laughs> Next, are there lady parts in here? I want a lady part. I've never had a lady part. I mean, from a cow. Trust me, guys, I have a good personal life. Don't worry. This is the female reproductive organ of a cow. Let's try it out. That was chewy, meaty, and it didn't feel like a big deal. We're missing the scrotum. <gasps> That's what I wanted. We need to get help. Hi, could you come here, please? We're looking for a scrotum, but we can't find it. That? No. As a man, I know that's not it. Okay, this is the scrotum. That's the scrotum. So thick. It's the same thing. Cut from the same cloth. From the same skin. Bull scrotum. Here we go, are you ready? The sauce is good, so you know. Yo, fucking hands down. I am damn impressed. As a Westerner, it should be so weird and like, oh, it's gross, it's not gonna be good. Everything's been fantastic. I'm glad you enjoyed. People here cook the shit out of their food. It's delicious, I'm stunned. Anyways, last thing, the Pen 15. I'm joining the boys club. You think that's peen? Is it not? It's so tiny. Let go, let go have my outfit night, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Oh gosh, see? <laughs> Let's try it out. Cheers. Shut the F up. That's so good. <laughs> what is going on? It tastes like beef tendon. And it's just bursting with this flavor. What was your least favorite? None. You I like loved everything. I'm so blown away. All of today, everything that I've tried has been stunning. Hong Kong, you son of a gun. They did it. This city has it. The ability to turn hardships into prosperity. The same way Mr. Hui turned a food once discarded into something undeniably delicious. What is going on? From green eggs to scrotum, it is official. The people of Hong Kong can cook the hell out of whatever you give them. There's no doubt history is being made right now in Hong Kong. If you're planning on visiting the city, I suggest you enlist the help of Virginia and her tour company, Human with a Chance of Fish Balls, to make the most of your time. From food tours to private tours and all the help you need navigating the city. And be sure to check out our second channel, More Best Ever Food Review Show, for raw clips and deleted scenes that didn't make it into the show. Huge thank you to Virginia for being an excellent guide while we're here. We will see you next time. Thank you for watching. A Peace!